I came across this circuit board that's used for um, energy harvesting. That's what it's advertised for. CJMCU3108. It does not come with the transformer. I've uh, seen some documentation that calls it an inductor, but it's a transformer. It's a 1 to 100 transformer. So you have to get that separately and solder it on. I managed to get it soldered on. It doesn't look great. It really needs a heat gun rework station to do it properly. You also have to solder together three junction points because this is a breakout board. Uh, it's designed to split right there for an unused portion if you don't need that part. The uh, chip is a MOSFET, which is important for how this circuit works. 9423108. Um, I've tried some other circuits that are based on uh, just regular NPN transistor technology. Um, of course, with a diode or any transistor, NPN type transistor, uh, it's not going to do anything until you put at least 0 0.6 volts across it because the voltage drop across a diode or a transistor like a 2N2222 is going to be about 0 0.6 volts. And these things don't make that much power. They make quite a bit of current for what they are. It's a thermoelectric cooler. This one is a Tech 112715, which I think means that it's a 15 amp. If you put 12 volts into it, it will draw 15 amps. But it does something really amazing it only puts out about 200 millivolts um, on open circuit tests so they don't put out that much and the reason MOSFET's important let me turn out the light is because MOSFET is not sensitive to that 0 0.6 volt threshold like uh, traditional semiconductors are, they will operate at a lower voltage, like 200 millivolts. So you can put heat on one side of these and cool on the other, and they'll actually generate electricity. They're designed for um, things like refrigeration. Um, if you apply power to them, they'll get hot on one side and cold on the other. But if you heat one side, and cool the other, it will actually generate enough power to run this circuit at about 200 millivolt input. It's putting out 4.1 volts to the LED. I gotta move it around on my desk as the surface heats up. It kind of gets a little dim. And you can use it to charge things like supercapacitors. It's a 5.5 volt, one farad. I ordered several to try. Four farad, 5.5 .5 volt. There's a couple I haven't even opened yet. I don't know what they are. 5.5 .5 volt, I know. 
because this board will actually put out on a separate pinout specially designed for a supercapacitor. Um, it can charge a supercapacitor from a small solar cell or just heat generated as a product of waste from um, things like burning wood. Um, they make fans that sit on top of your wood stove that spin, blow air, just from the heat generated from a wood stove. There's a big difference in these tiles. Peltier, Peltier, however you say it. Uh, they all seem to be ceramic on the surface, but the technology that's inside of them or the architecture that it's made out of. Um, there's a wide variety of them for different temperature ranges. If you're just going to use it for normal, just body heat or uh, hot water, maybe even boiling water, um, there's a lot of them that will work with that temperature range. But if you want to apply one directly to a surface like a wood stove, or a candle or something like that. You need specially designed ones that can withstand the heat. Um, one that I'm looking into, I think I've already ordered it. It's a bismuth telluride, I think is how you say that. Um, the junction inside of it is uh, similar to an NPN junction. In a transistor, it's dissimilar metals um, that behave a certain way when you apply power to them. One gets hot, one gets cold. And uh, I'm not sure what this one is, what technology it is. They all seem to do the same thing, but they're designed for wildly different applications and temperature ranges. So you have to kind of do a lot of research on what exactly you want and what temperature range if you want to build something out of them. Uh, the only use I've found for them is just a flashlight. Um, my first attempt at a heat sink is just a copper plate that you could hold in your hand and see how much power it could generate. I was using it on this circuit and uh, because this circuit will not work below 0 0.6 volts, I wasn't able to get enough power out of that. Now, if I dip this in boiling water or put it in a pot of boiling water, it has plenty of power. The tiles in this one are actually high-temperature thermoelectric generators. Um, so it's useful for boiling water. You can get quite a bit of power out of there. The second one I actually used this circuit in is a flashlight. Pretty simple. I uh, didn't want to invest a lot of money in it, so I just made it out of some minimalistic materials and it actually functions pretty good. That was version 2.0. And now that I know it worked, I made version 3.0, which is more like a standard flashlight. None of these are super bright because it's very cumbersome to get the slightest amount of accidental free energy from the environment um, you really got to jump through a lot of hoops um, even solar seems simple but it the technology took quite a long time to develop and is always kind of still developing version 3.0 has heat sinks on the inside and outside all the way through it. Designed for a more rugged 
environment where the temperature difference between your body heat and the outside environment may not be that dissimilar if it's warm outside. If it's too hot outside, these won't work. Obviously, if your body heat is 98.6 and it's 98.6 degrees outside, it's going to do nothing. So, they have a fatal flaw, but it's definitely useful. Those tiles could be installed on a window where there's a temperature difference between inside and outside. Or even on a car where the temperature difference might be drastically different from inside to outside. You can generate quite a bit of power just from uh, environmental temperature differences between indoors and outdoors. I'm going to keep tinkering with it. I've got some more um, Peltier, I think is how it's pronounced. Got two more of those coming that are bismuth telluride and i have not tried that yet and i think from what i've read those will operate at the lowest temperature most efficiently from any of the others they're not really designed to do what i want to do with them with uh, very low temperatures their thermal electric generators are all designed for quite a bit of heat i haven't found one that's designed for anything less than you know 100 degrees celsius which is boiling keep tinkering with it more to come i guess